Hey guys, it's Jill. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today's video is going to be a crockpot video. And today, in today's video, we have four new crockpot, slow cooker, dump and go crockpot dinner slash meal ideas for you guys. I hope that you enjoy. There is one meal in here that is something like I've never done before. So I really, really, really hope that you guys enjoy this video. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of editing style do you guys like for these video videos to be in? Do you guys like for me to give you tips? Do you like them longer? Do you like them shorter? But do you like them longer if it includes tips on certain things? like how to do certain things. Do you want to see me chopping? Do you not want to see me chopping? Let me know in the comments down below what you guys would prefer to see. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into our dump and go crock pot meal ideas. So it is the first chilly, chilly day here in North Carolina. So what better way to spend a chilly fall day than to make a delicious dump and go crock pot beef stew. You're gonna need stew meat. The recipe calls for two pounds. I totally forgot to go pick more up. Uh, this is about one and a quarter pound. It's gonna be fine. We need some garlic. The recipe calls for half an onion. So we're gonna go ahead and chop up half of a red onion. The recipe also calls for four russet potatoes, but I truly wanted this to be a dump and go. So I just got diced up potatoes from the freezer section. This also has onions and peppers, which I think will be a nice addition to this as well. But if you just wanna do the four russet potatoes, clean them, peel them, cube them, and then you can put them in the, in the crock pot. But I'm taking the easy way. You're also gonna need steak sauce, beef broth, steak seasoning, and then at the end, to thicken everything up, you're gonna need some cornstarch and water. So what you're gonna do is get your crock pot out. You're going to chop up half of a red onion, and then you're just going to put that on the bottom of your crock pot, like so. Let me know what is your favorite meal to eat in the fall. And is it a crock pot meal? I love my crock pot in the fall and the winter. Just absolutely love it. So there's our onion. Next, you wanna take your four russet potatoes or your frozen potatoes. I'm just gonna eyeball this and I'm gonna assume off the bat half a bag. Maybe a little more. Yeah. Say maybe a little more than half is what I use. So that just goes down into the bottom. And then we're gonna top our onions and potatoes with our stew meats. Like I said, it calls for two pounds. My Walmart only delivered a pound and a quarter, but that's okay. Next, we're gonna season this up with some steak seasoning. I'm gonna measure this with my heart, but the recipe does call for one tablespoon. I'm just going to season it the way that I would like it to be seasoned which is actually the rest of our little bottle. Next, you wanna take your minced garlic. You can mince it up yourself, or you can just use it this way. She's calling for one teaspoon. I'm gonna, I love garlic, so I'm gonna do a little bit more. So again, I say with that, measure with your heart, baby girl. Okay, now we're gonna take our A1 steak sauce. You can use any steak sauce, it doesn't have to be A1, but it is going to be half of a cup. So half a cup goes over the top. And then you want two cups of beef broth. So you just put that over top, like so. And then you stir all of this together. Because we want to cook this nice and slow and we want that beef to be incredibly tender, we're going to cook this on low for, I'm going to go with seven hours, especially because it's earlier in the morning uh, and I have the time. But low and slow, I definitely say is the game whenever it comes to any kind of beef, especially like this. Or you can, of course, do it on high to three to four. So let's go put it in the crock pot. Okay, so here is my new crock pot. I absolutely love her. I love the fact that you can set it and if you're not going to be home, it'll automatically turn off 
after eight hours, if that's what you're doing, or after four hours or whatever. Um, I just also love the fact that you can set a time and then it automatically just goes on to warm when it's done. So it's done and covered up. Like I said, I'm gonna do it for seven. I'm gonna do it on low for seven hours. Let's just do seven and a half. And then there we go. This is what we are looking like. Do y'all see this? Oh, hold on, it's fogging up the camera. I don't want it any thicker than that, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a bowl. One thing this is missing is carrots. Why does this not have carrots in it? Okay, well it's just a, it's called a steak and potatoes beef stew. Oh, I forgot, it's hot. Girl. When I tell you this beef just like a li literally falls apart. Mm. It is so good. I'm gonna try some of the potato on the little juice that's in there. Like I said, I didn't need to thicken it up. If you want yours thicker, just add a tablespoon of cornstarch with a quarter cup of water, whisk that together and then put it in the crock pot uh, 30 minutes prior to when you're ready to eat. Dang, that's good. So y'all try this, y'all let me know. I'm gonna go ahead and serve this if I, again, if I had some crusty bread, I would totally serve it with that, but I don't. <laughs> so I'm gonna probably do like a slice of sourdough with some butter. This would actually, I know there's potatoes in here, but I, for some reason when I was dishing it out, I was like, this would be really good over rice. Even better, some buttered rice. Delish. Let me know if you guys try this. This recipe will be linked down below in the description box. Okay, so as we're eating this, I'm asking my daughter, I'm like, what do you think about it? And she's like, it's good, but are these potatoes? And I was like, yeah. You know what she told me? They're too soft. And I was like, you know what? You are right. So I guess maybe if you're gonna do the mini potatoes like I did, since they're already cooked and they're just frozen, maybe put it in like the last 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, so this is one of my absolute all time favorite slow cooker dump and go crock pot meals. This is slow cooker tomato tortellini soup. So this is everything you're gonna need right now. And then this is what you're going to need later on. But let's work on this right now. Okay, so currently I have a skillet on medium low heating up and I'm gonna take this sausage from Publix, which is the absolute best sausage. It's number one, chicken sausage. Number two, look at these macros, like 110 calories and 16 grams of protein in one link and then you only have four grams of fat. You already know with Italian sausage, it's pretty high up there. And this tastes amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and we need these out of the casings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a little slit in the uh, sausage like that. And then basically that takes your casing off. And then I'm just gonna put this whole chicken sausage link into this pot, which you guys can't see. And I can't move the camera because I now have chicken hands. Okay, so here is the sausage just like this. Now you just wanna take this little meat thingy masher, what do you call it? Meat breaker upper and just break up your sausage into, I should have sprayed this pan. This pan is not non-stick, it's non-toxic, but it's not non-stick, but it's okay. I'm just taking this and breaking this down like so. And I'm just gonna keep working on this until it browns up. So now that our sausage is all browned up. You're just gonna put that into the bottom of your crock pot. By the way, this was one pound of chicken Italian sausage. So 16 ounces of sausage. Now we're gonna take a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes down into the bottom. We are going to take a full carton, which is 32 ounces or about four cups of what I have here is reduced sodium chicken broth, but just four cups of chicken broth, whether you wanna use 
the full sodium or not goes up to you. Now we're gonna take two 10.75 ounces of condensed tomato soup and that goes down into the crock pot as well. Here is can number two. Just gonna go ahead and mix that together real quick and it is that simple. I'm gonna go ahead and cook this on low for seven hours. 30 minutes before you're ready to eat is when we're gonna do the second part and add the additional things. You could also do this on high for two to four hours, but I'm gonna do low for seven hours. So I will see y'all in seven hours. Well, it'll be a few seconds for y'all. This has been cooking for seven hours now. So this is what we're looking like. It's pretty plain without the addition of what we're about to add right now. So we are about to add in these frozen tortellini for the cheese tortellini and it's a 19 ounce package. Next, we are taking two of these chive and onion cream cheese spreads. They are two eight ounce containers. So a total of 16 ounces. I read the recipe just now and it said it's supposed to be softened. I just got this out of the fridge, so it's not softened, but that should be okay. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and switch it over to high. I'm gonna do 30 minutes. You're gonna go ahead and cover it and then that way the tortellini can get all nice and soft and cooked. And then also, this cream cheese can go ahead and melt. So it's been a little longer than 30 minutes, but this is what it's looking like. Ta-da! Okay, so we're gonna try this baby. It is hot, hot, hot. But... Mm. I'm gonna need y'all to make this. I'm gonna need y'all to make it. And let me know what y'all think, because this is absolutely like one of my favorite crock pot meals for sure. You like it? Even Ava over here likes it. Today we are making chicken fajita pasta. I am in a rush this morning, and I knew I was going to be in a rush this morning. So I went ahead and I pre-prepped a lot of this last night. You're going to need two chicken breasts cooked up. So I've got that. Did that last night. Going down into the crock pot. Now we're going to season our chicken with two tablespoons of taco seasoning. I even put like all of my things, all of my ingredients that I was gonna need out over here on my counter. And I even put out my measuring cups, measuring spoons, anything that I was gonna need. I also pre-made my broth last night. So this is truly a dump and go. And this is a really good tip, especially if you're super busy and need to get out the door in the mornings. Go ahead and do all the work the night before. <sighs> it's not coming out. And then that way, when you go to put it in the morning, it like literally takes like three minutes and you're good to go. So. That is, you know, setting up and prepping is going to, you know, planning and prepping is going to really set you up for success. Now, you need two bell peppers and half an onion dice. I did a whole onion, so you're just going to put that over the top. Again, I used my little chopper, and I did all that last night. You're going to need two teaspoons of garlic. I'm going to do four because your girl loves garlic. You're going to need one can of Rotel or just get diced tomatoes with green chilies. Down in there it goes. Two cups of chicken broth. Again, I made this last night because I used one and a half teaspoons to two cups. So one and a half teaspoons of this chicken bouillon. They're little like granules and it makes your broth. The only thing I realized about this, it's very flavorful, but it doesn't add any additional protein like chicken broth would but your girl's trying to save money and cut, cut corners anywhere she can so i guess we're just gonna have to do what, do without that extra bit of protein um and that's it right now we're just gonna you can mix this together i don't feel the need for it i'm just gonna go ahead and pop the lid on it i'm gonna set this on low for six hours and then we're gonna need some cooked penne pasta 
and two cups of shredded cheddar cheese and then toppings to top this off, which we'll go over once this is done. So I will see you guys in six hours. That literally took me three minutes. I'm not even kidding. That's amazing. It has been six hours and this recipe calls for you to add cooked pasta to this. However, I feel that there is enough liquid in here that the pasta can cook, in, can cook in here. So we're gonna experiment and I'm gonna be the guinea pig, okay? And I'll let y'all know if this works. But it needs a whole 16 ounce box of whatever pasta. I'm gonna use this mini, I'm gonna call it bow tie pasta. And what I'm going to do is throw this pasta in there, give it a little stir, make sure it's all coated i'm gonna put the lid on it i'm gonna turn this on to high for 30 minutes fingers crossed it comes out amazing okay so it cooked but it does need a little bit more liquid and it also needs a little more time so i went ahead and i set it back on high for 30 minutes and i added maybe a fourth of a cup of just plain filtered water so we're gonna give it a try and see if that helps to cook. Most of it cooked, but there are some hard pieces of pasta. So it looks like it's gonna work though. Okay, so that was actually perfect. Okay, so just a little bit more water. And now the recipe calls for two cups of cheese. I don't have two cups. So I'm just gonna add what I have. So I have this mild cheddar. But then I also have this reduced fat Fiesta blend. So it honestly might come out to be two cups. Here is what it is looking like. It actually looks really good. And I'm really, really, really excited for this. Okay, so here's my plate. I just have a side salad with lots of veggies in there. And then I just topped my fajita pasta. I don't even know if I told you all that's what this is. Crock pot chicken fajita pasta with some avocado and then a little bit of sour cream. You could also do diced tomatoes. You could do some salsa if you wanted to. You could also do some tortilla strips, but that is what it looks like. Let's try it. All right, now I've already gotten Ava's opinion and her opinion is the pasta is too soft. <laughs> so it's too soggy. That was my fault. So whenever you cook that pasta, if you're gonna cook it in with the meal, get it out immediately don't keep it on warm don't let it keep cooking i wasn't ready to eat i just really made it so my son could go ahead and take it with, to work with him and we weren't ready to eat so it is very soggy so keep that in mind but i'm gonna go ahead and taste it if the pasta wasn't soggy mm, i mean it's still good but two things either cook it separately or, like I said earlier, if you're gonna cook it with, serve it immediately. Do not let it keep cooking. I love the taste of it. For tonight's dump and go crock pot dinner, we are making something I've never tried before, but I thought would be really intriguing and I'm very intrigued by. So we're gonna go ahead and make some slow cooker butternut pear, butternut pear soup. I'm so excited. So these are the ingredients, very, very, very simple ingredients. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanted to do, we are going to need a tablespoon of freshly grated ginger. I've never worked with ginger before, but I'm thinking that this is how you're supposed to peel it, which is just to take the back of a spoon and just kind of peel the outer layer off. It seems to be coming off pretty easily. I also have, where'd it go? I will link this down below. I got this from Amazon. I love this thing, but this is a zester. And this is, this is very, very, what do you call it? Sharp, very intense. So it's gonna really get this down good. Um, it's gonna really finely grate this ginger, which is exactly what I need. So it's very, sharp and it gets the job done. I'm not sure how much I need to peel of this to get a full tablespoon, but I'm just gonna peel how much I think. 
and do it just like that. I feel like I got about half of a tablespoon. So that was a little bit of a labor of love, but that's okay. We are now going to need two ripe pears. So these are Bartlett pears and these were the ripest in the store. For these pears, you're supposed to peel them, core them and dice them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I actually usually like to, this is, this is a very ripe pear, wow. I'm not going to take the skin off. And that's just me. I personally like to leave the skin on things, especially, I mean, it's just where all the nutrients are. It's where all the fiber is. So if you wanna go through the trouble of coring it or of peeling it, I say go ahead, but I'm gonna leave it on. So now that I have it cored, I'm gonna go ahead and take it and take my little dicer my chopper and we're gonna dice it up that way. Next for chopping, we're gonna need to quarter two shallots. So I just have this little pack of three. Just gonna go ahead and take the outer part of the shallot off. So now that we have our two pairs cored and diced and then two shallots quartered, I'm gonna go ahead and put that down into the crock pot. So what you're gonna need is two pounds of butternut squash. Girl, if you want to, you go ahead. Hold on. If you wanna go ahead and mess with getting, if you wanna go ahead and get the butternut squash yourself and cook, like, cut it up and peel it and all of the things, by all means, but me, I am taking it. Girl, if I could have taken the shortcut on the pear and the ginger, I would have, but I had to do that. But here going down is two cups of cubed butternut squash. Like I said, I took the help from the store on this one. So now we're gonna do two and a quarter cups of chicken broth. You can do vegetable broth if you want. I did chicken bouillon. That is two and a quarter cups. And that is all we're going to need for now with the exception of our grated ginger. So go ahead and take your grated ginger. So you can either cook this on low for eight hours or cook this on high for four hours. It has been a little over four hours and this is what we're looking like. So we are going to blend all of this up. I'm sure there's probably an easier way, but at this point right now, I feel like the easiest way for me to get this mixture from the crock pot into the blender is just to take a soup ladle and to just ladle it on in there. Now I'm gonna put the top on my blender. Oh, it's already plugged in. I don't remember doing that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blend this up. Okay, I really, really, really wanna try this because I'm so intrigued as to how this tastes. It doesn't smell great, I'm not gonna lie. It really does not smell great. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this back into our crock pot. Okay, so I kind of messed up a little bit. You were actually supposed to put the coconut milk in with the blender. I think it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and take half of a cup. And like I said, oh my gosh, do you guys see that? How pretty is that? That's actually really pretty. But you're supposed to blend it in the blender. Now I already like put mine up. So we're just gonna have to like, you know what, I'll get a whisk. Now it does say to go ahead and reserve some of the coconut milk cause you obviously have more left over. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it from the can and put it into another container. So that way, as I have each serving, I can drizzle some more coconut milk. But next it says a pinch of nutmeg goes in there. Wait, that's all? We should do a little bit more. Just like a little tiny bit more. I know nutmeg is strong, but that just don't look like much. <laughs> and then it calls for a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna go ahead and salt it like so. And I wanna go, I'm intrigued. So we're gonna go ahead and try this together right now. And if it needs more salt or any more, if I feel like it needs more nutmeg or anything like that, then I will add it 
after, but let's go ahead and taste this together. Okay, so I put a little bit of coconut milk over top. This is how much I got. And like I said, it doesn't smell, it wasn't smelling good. Now it kind of smells good. But I was just really intrigued. This is something very different, but it's still nice and warm and cozy. And it's a perfect side dish to any dinner that you may have, soup and salad. If you wanna make this as your main dish, so many ways you could do this. I personally think that I'm gonna use this uh, probably as a side to dinner. We'll see though, but let's go ahead and taste test. I really hope that I like this, but I don't know, bon appetit. Okay. I can definitely taste the ginger. I don't know what I'm supposed to be tasting when it comes to coconut milk. I do want to add a little salt. I feel it's missing something, but it's not bad. I mean, I like pears. I love butternut squash. The coconut milk was pretty good. I like ginger. We'll say it's not my favorite, but if you want to try something that's nice, warm, cozy, you know, the spices are warm and cozy. Give this a try. I think you might like it. But overall, the more that I eat it, the more I'm like, this is good. Bon appetit. Cheers. Let me know if you try this. I think that you should, especially if you're looking for something different. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you guys have, are only here for this video and you don't know, I upload every single Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I do a variety of things here on my channel. I do weekly vlogs. I do get it all done videos. I do get it all done videos can be so many different things like cleaning motivation and baking and all kinds of stuff, uh, more meal ideas. So definitely check out those videos along with fashion videos. I do try ons and stuff like that and a little beauty sprinkled in here and there. So I definitely hope you guys go check out my other things as well if you're just here and found me through this video. But thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave me a comment down below. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share it. Do all of the things. I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.